In this fourth film, we look back at the early years of York City playing at Fulford Gate and Boovham Crescent through the eyes of one of the club's oldest fans and uncover a significant archive of material relating to the period from the 1920s to the 1940s. Well, I think my father, along with quite maybe other people, decided uh, to start. My father obviously had always liked sport, mm -hmm. being into cricket as well as football, and uh, they decided to start a football club. And from being very small, a lot of the men who came to play the uh, Fulford Gate ground were Ex, well, were miners, and they came, I suppose, because in the twenties there wasn't the pits were not much work going on, and uh, so if they were any good, and usually these people from the north of England who were from pit villages were good footballers, mm -hmm. very good indeed. He was the director of the club, was he? Yes, he time, became a director. Oh. Uh, well, he, he used to be a football, he was a, a referee for a while, uh, round in the smaller clubs, the Yorkshire League and that. And uh, then when they started the club, he eventually, I think it was in the 20s, he went on to the board. Your memories of Fulford Gate then, and, and how old would you have been when you first went to your first match there? Oh, uh, three. Maybe more, less, I don't know. I always know I was taken <laughs> as a small child uh, to Fulford Gate. Past its sell-by date, I can tell you, because uh, I know the steps that led up to, to get onto the stand, they were like, went up like that, so you could get in through crawling through the back of the stand and through the steps, you could get into the stand. I actually stumbled upon all this just by accident really. When I, once I got the link to Barker's Charity and the link to St mm. Saviour's, it was just through internet um, Google searching that mm -hmm. I struck upon this right. collection of church records here at the Borfolk Institute. And you were doing that research because you've got a book coming out, I understand. That's right, yeah. And I've, I've been, for the last four years, I've been researching and writing about York City Football Club and Booth and Crescent and the history and how they're both intrinsically linked. Mm. And this was like gold dust because it actually gave an awful lot more information about how City came to be at Bilton Crescent. Because I think it's quite commonly known that uh, York Cricket Club played at Bilton Crescent um, until 1932, but the full circumstances about how City came to be the tenants and moved into there wasn't, for me anyway, it wasn't fully known until mm. this archive. And this archive was really a missing piece, which gave me an awful lot of the jigsaw and the information that allowed me to write a couple of chapters in the book about the 1932 move yeah. and about the sale in 1948. So moving on to your memories of Boom and Crescent then, were you at the first game in the new stadium in Yes, that was the, um, against uh, Stockport County. I also remember going to Boom Crescent to watch another totally different game, baseball. And it was someone called Pauline. And he brought these baseball players over from Canada and I got hooked on baseball, <laughs> really. I, I really enjoyed it, thought it was great. So, I mean, we had some um, great games there, especially when we got into, you know, uh, playing the bigger club in the cup and that, yes. A record crowd of 28,000 packs the Bootham Crescent ground to watch York City entertain Huddersfield. Among the distinguished visitors is Viscount Halifax, new foreign secretary. York, in dark shirts, attack from the start, and there are several anxious moments round the Huddersfield girl. But the balance of play is pretty even, and both girlies are kept busy. Well-placed shots hit the crossbar more than once. So this document here is the original lease of Booth and Crescent, which, was, which ran from 1932 to 1945, initially at £90 a year. Mm. That was the complete rent for, for that period which is communication from the football club to Barker's Charity, quite often saying that the rent was being paid late. Okay. Well, probably a couple of months <laughs> late, paying the half yearly amount of £45. But it isn't until Paul contacted me that we, we were made aware of the, the, the sheer volume of information mm. that's, that's stored here at the Borthwick. Yes. 
It's, it's a shame in a way that, that all this archive material is, is in different locations Scattered, and, yeah. uh, and not properly referenced together. So that maybe that's something for the future. Ab absolutely, it should should be uh, copied and, and stored digitally somewhere, with, you know, and, and retained certainly by the by, by the club or, or by the trust. What what it's brought on to me looking at this archive and also um, the other research I've been doing is there's nothing at all at Fulford Gate which commemorates the fact that there was a football ground there, no. and a, you know, because football grounds are you know places of great community, of great interest, you know, real you know places of pilgrimage for people, you know, supporters, you know, families, friends, everything. There's nothing there at all that reflects the fact York City played there for 10 years other than the sign signpost for the street called Fulford Gate. Yeah. So that's why I, I, for one, think it's really important that there's something at Bilvan Crescent, you know, some memento or some kind of artefacts or that still exists there to reflect mm -hmm. the fact that, fact that when York City have left and the uh, housing development has taken place, there's something there which is reflects the fact that York City played there for 87 years. Absolutely, and Mike, you'd concur with that, I'm sure. Absolutely, I think um, for some some people, that's more in the cynical age we live in, um, a football ground is no more than a load of concrete and steel. But actually, you know, the history of it really just illustrates how, as fans, we're all connected. A lot of us are connected way back through the generations. Mm -hmm. I do think that you know the work that Historic England's been doing with the local council and the, the, the developers and the club and, and the trust is so valuable in in marking the place uh, where we've all just got these incredible memories. So when was your last game you saw there, would you say? Well, it, my father died in 65 and I don't think I've been since. Since then, the memories too. I, I, I know I couldn't. I couldn't have gone back. I, uh, I really. To me, he was York City. If you have memories to share of Boovem Crescent or ideas about how the site should be redeveloped, please contact Historic England.